August 22nd. We dare not look up with holy, humble boldness. We misinterpret his dealings, think harshly of his ways. And if providences are dark and afflictions come, in a moment we exclaim, I have sinned and God is angry. And so we seek concealment from God. Where a child of God then neglects the habit of a daily confession of sin, by slow and almost imperceptible degrees, the conscience loses its tenderness. It becomes by this gradual process so hardened as at length to think nothing of a sin, which at a previous period would have filled the soul with horror and remorse. One more evil we may mention, and that is that a neglect of this most important duty causes a fearful forgetfulness of sin. Without the sweet sense of its forgiveness, the believer loses sight of his sin, not because he knows it is to be pardoned, afresh, blotted out, but from a mere carnal forgetfulness of the sin. The child of God, on whose conscience the atoning blood has been afresh sprinkled, cannot soon forget his sin. Oh no. Freed from a sense of its condemnation, delivered from its guilt, and looking up to the unclouded face of a reconciled God. Yet he remembers how far he could depart from the God that so loved him, and so readily and freely forgave him. The very pardon of his sin stamps it upon his memory. He thinks of it only to admire the love, adore the grace, and extol the blood that blotted it out. And thus he is led to go softly all his days. My soul has them still in remembrance and is humbled in me. But the believer who neglects the duty and the privilege of confession loses the remembrance of his sin until brought under the rod of the covenant. Then some deep and heavy chastisement recalls it to his memory and fills him with shame, humiliation, and contrition. In this state, the eternal spirit comes into the soul with his restoring mercies, leads the abased and humbled believer afresh to the fountain open, and God, the God of all comfort, speaks in words of comfort to his broken heart.